welcome to the micro communication course today we talk about the traveling wave tube amplifier so in a traveling wave tube amplifier in which the interaction between that beam and the rf field is continuous here and we have the electric field and a magnetic field both are in the axis so they, that's why this tube is called as a linear tube there and this traveling wave tube is used as a amplifier so we have seen earlier that a two cavity klystron and a multi cavity klystron that klystrons are used as a amplifier so similarly we have a traveling wave tube is used as a amplifier here now in this traveling wave tube amplifier a helix type structure or we can say that a slow wave structure is used to amplify the signal so it's of a cavity so how these slowing structures are there slowing structures are looks like helix that are to be used so there are various types of slow wave structures and that slow wave structures they have their own resonant frequency and that resonant frequencies are depending upon that inductance and capacitance of this slow wave structure so if you want to maintain the oscillation inside it slow wave structure so we need to consider that what type of slow wave structure we is supposed to be used here and generally we consider that a cavity earlier so for the given particular cavity so that cavity it has again a capacitors and the inductors and that capacitors and inductors because of that the resonant frequency depending upon the inductance as well as the capacitance here and in this particular two wave uh, two cavity klystron amplifier so that a cavity operating frequency is depending upon that a capacitance and a inductance there and again that cavity res cavity has a resonant frequency it is depending upon that inductance and capacitance again we say that the gain bandwidth product is limited or there are the limitations of the gain bandwidth product based on this particular resonance circuit so generally we need to get the large output with a gain bandwidth product improvement so that can be occur if supposed to be or that can be achieved if supposed to be we are using the non resonant periodic circuits or we can say that a slow wave structure and that slow wave structures are designed such a way that it will produce a large gain over a wider bandwidth so in a slow in a traveling wave tube amplifier a slow wave structures are used and that slow wave structure will produce a large gain and that large gain at a wider bandwidth so what are the various these are the non resonant slow wave circuit okay so that we can say that here we have a, a slow wave structure and that are slow wave structure is used in a traveling wave tube amplifier what are the structures of a slow wave what are the various slow wave structures there so here if you see that it has only a tube so likewise we have okay now this one is about a, a slow wave structure so we can say that it's about helix or we can say that it is about a helical line there <coughs> so through this your rf signal is propagating through this tube helical tube okay so your your rf signal will be propagating through this tube there or we have a, another structure is about a full back line
this one is about we can say it is about a folded back line this one is about a folded back line or we can say that another structure is about a zigzag line okay that is called as a zigzag line and another is about a inter <laughs> or we can say that a corrugated waveguide here. Now these are the various low structures. So out of this a helix type of slow slow structures is used generally we supposed to be considered that a helix slow structure <clears throat> so what happened here so your electron beam is passing through this center of the helix this is supposed to be say that this is nothing but a, a tube now okay that is nothing but a spring an internal that spring that electron beam is supposed to be passing through it so likewise so we supposed to be say that now this one is about a pin this white is nothing but if supposed to be considered a tube, this one is a tube and this one is about your refill is nothing but act as a your electron beam is passing through this. Okay, so likewise. So means we have a tube and th through that tube your electron beam is propagating through this tube here and around that this one is about a helix type of a slow wave structure is there. So now this particular st structures are used in a microwave tubes that are used to reduce the wave velocity. Okay, wave velocity means what your wave is propagating through this tube and the electron beam is propagating around, okay, at the center of this particular tube here. So the beam velocity is different, electron beam velocity is different and the velocity of this, what you can say that wave propagating through this tube will be a different here. So we need to find out what will be the electron beam velocity and what will be the beam velocity, what will be the wave velocity there. So now when we need to interact the both the signal there, okay, signal interaction takes place, amplification takes place, when we need to consider that the velocity of the wave as well as the velocity of a beam propagating through this a tube here. <clears throat> so here for a given particular helix here, if you consider that so this particular helix, so this is nothing but a pitch here. You can say that this one is about a P that is called as a pitch here. And for a given particular helix, so it has some particular <coughs> A diameter of the helix that is about a d here so p is nothing but helix pitch means what whatever the turn from one turn to the another turn that is nothing but a helical pitch here and here through that velocity okay we can say that it is to be propagating there and the phase velocity along the pitch or whatever you can say that that is about a pitch here and the and the phase velocity along the coil, that is this one is about a helical coil. We have the ratio, so that is about a phase velocity. <coughs> With respect to whatever we can say that the velocity of light in a free space, it is depending upon that, whatever the helix pitch here and the, their diameter. Here. So you can write the equation that for the pitch and the diameter here. <coughs> Phi d bracket square, or we can say that it is equal to sine of a psi here, and that psi is nothing but the pitch angle. Psi is nothing but the a pitch angle. What is the pitch angle? Generally, we say that from one turn to the another turn, this is nothing but a pitch, and from this, we are supposed to say that it will take a turn. So that's why this one is nothing but a, a, a psi here. So this one, Vp by C, we say is equal to sine of psi. T is nothing but the diameter of your pitch. P is nothing but the helix pitch here. 
and that see nothing but the velocity of a, a light here so in general if you consider that whatever the helical tube is there that helical tube is present within a particular region or we can say that is that is a, a cylindrical region and that cylindrical region is filled with some particular dielectric so that's why the phase velocity in the axial direction okay the phase velocity in the axial direction is equal to okay the phase velocity in the axial direction is equal to bpe here is equal to that is about x pitch here under root of the mu epsilon t square plus pi t bracket Okay, now that is about a phase velocity in the axial direction. And in general, if you consider that the dielectric constant is supposed to be large there, so then in that case, then this helical tube structure inside this particular cylindrical that may introduce a losses to the microwave device. So that's why we need to consider that dielectric constant should not be lost. large if the dielectric constant large then there will be losses and due to that losses a tube efficiency will be reduced there and again we need to find out what will be the value of this particular pitch okay if that pitch angle is supposed to be a very very small there then for a given if small pitch angle a tra traveling wave tube amplification will be it takes place so what will be the smallest value of this pitch angle and based on this small value of the pitch angle what will be the velocity okay that phase velocity along the pile in the free space so in that case we can write phase velocity is equal to what if we c by pi t or we can say that omega by beta and this omega beta that is the relation that is called as a brulem diagram here and that brulem diagram for the helical wave structure so we supposed to draw the diagram so that in that case we need to consider that at what value of a omega and at what value of a beta your phase velocity will be dependent here so if you consider that here likewise we supposed to consider and at actual this way here we can say that your diagram of what a a phase velocity with respect to that omega by beta here that the particle now this particular diagram it is useful to find out the what will be the helix type structure there what will be the helix type structure means what we can say that to design the helical structures we should know that what value of a beta is to be used so that will get that a, a phase velocity okay so what value of the beta is supposed to be considered so that will get the phase velocity of a wave here so that's why we consider here for a, any flow wave structure so we need to consider using this omega by beta so we will get the phase velocity again we consider that what will be the group velocity for the particular for a given particular slope here so that is depending upon that a omega beta here. so generally we say that a group velocity we can write do d omega by d beta here and if you draw the omega by beta ratio okay so in that case for the omega beta diagram here we supposed to be consider that what will be the phase velocity and in which quadrant that phase velocity that curve okay that slope will be occur in terms of that omega beta diagram there and that particular way we say that if you consider here okay in which quadrant generally we say that it is in a, a second quadrant of that we will get that omega by beta ratio here so that we will get that a, a phase velocity in that case we supposed to consider that what will be the direction of that electron beam is supposed to be propagating and at what value of that particular 
page velocity so your beam interacted your beam electron beam is interacted with the rf field there okay so we supposed to be consider that for a given particular slow wave structure so what will be the pitch angle okay that's the part we can supposed to be consider here what is the helix pitch here and what will be the is supposed to be a pitch angle for this particular helix there so that we'll get that a highest value of the amplification there so we supposed to be consider that this problem diagram as well as a a slow wave structure in the traveling wave tube amplifier so now how your traveling wave tube amplifier looks like so it has a a slow wave structure so along with that a slow wave structure so it has a a magnet here that is used to focus the electron beam there in a given particular direction so your diagram for the traveling wave tube amplifier so it has a a cathode heater this is nothing but what we can say a cathode here okay so these are the electron beams are propagating through this and then we have the we supposed to consider that okay so that we'll get the output here so this one is about our helix and then helix is consider along with that we have the magnet here these are nothing but the magnet these are the magnets to be used to focus the electron in a given direction okay so we can supposed to consider that here we have the a input here we supposed to be give the input here rf input rf input here so we supposed to take the rf output here okay <laughs> along with that we have the anode here here is the anode and your electron is supposed to be propagating that electron beam is supposed to be propagating through this helix type tube here okay and then at the end we supposed to be consider here magnet here magnet length is large and then this uh, whatever the electrons we are they are propagating here so at the end we have the collector this one we supposed to say that it will be collected that is called as a collector so collector it is about a positive voltage here that is about a collector here so we require a collector supply separately there then this one is about a anode we supposed to give the positive supply for this okay so we supposed to give the negative supply for this beam voltage here okay so that is about your beam voltage the anode is connected here so that we that whatever the electrons beams are generated through this cathode it is depending upon that heater supply or we can say that a beam supply this one is about a dc beam voltage that is to be applied to the cathode so that electrons are propagating electrons are passing through this a helical type tube here okay this one is about your helix your electrons are propagating or passing through this helix here and we see here when we have the for a given particular rf this tube we supposed to provide the input here and we'll get that a rf output then in between that these two helix tubes are used okay here if you see that these are the two helix tubes we are supposed to consider here so here supposed to be use the attenuator okay this these are nothing but a attenuator and this one is nothing but you can say a magnet okay this one is about your magnet now okay this red one is about your focusing magnet and this one is nothing but attenuator attenuator is 
place in between these two helix tubes. One helix tube, another helix tube. So now input is given. So your electron beams are passing through this tube here. That is about you can say this one is we have a tube here, and electron beams are passing through the tube. Then we have the alternator here, electron beam again, it is further passing through the tube. So in general, what is the principle here? So here that beam is produced by this cathode, it is to be a narrow beam. Why it is narrow? Because it is to be passing through this a tube there. Okay, just like a spring like structure. So it is to be passing through this particular tube. Okay, so this one is about you can say helix. Okay. So in that case, if you consider that whatever the helix we suppose to be used here, helix is has a, a positive supply. Okay, this one is a positive one. So that whatever the electrons propagating through this, that is to be passed through the this particular tube means it has a, a narrow beam. So if that electron, okay, those are not Propagating through this, whatever we can say, this narrow helix, okay, what you can say that helix, so that electrons will focus by this particular magnet, means all the electrons are focused at the axis of the helix, okay, whichever the electrons are there, they will not be diverted any direction there, so they are supposed to propagate through the center of the helix, so that's why these magnets are used to focus the electron. And that electron is supposed to be passed through the axis of the helix. Okay. So that's why those electrons are passing through this helix here. And then at the end, it will be collected at the collector there. So this beam, whatever the we say that this beam is to be narrow so that your electrons will pass through the center of the helix without touching to the helix. If supposed to be electrons touch to the helix, it will be absorbed. Okay. So that will be what we can say that is about a loss for the given particle. So in the one case here, we supposed to be apply the input to the helix. Okay, we supposed to be apply the input to the helix through any guide or we can say the coaxial cable. And then your field will propagating your RF field. That is about your RF input. That is propagating through the helix there. Okay, means your field is propagating around the helix. And then electric field is propagating through the helix here. Now here we can say that. And that at the end we have the RF output. We are supposed to be take the RF output from the tube. Now M is about the amplifier. How it is to be amplified? Now field propagating through this helix, it has some particular speed. And if that speed, if it is, generally we say that, RF field propagating in a free space, it has a velocity is about a 3 into 10 to the power 8. This is the field is propagating through the helix structure. So that's why the speed of this RF field is less than the velocity of a light in a free space. Means it is the velocity of a wave propagating through this helix structure. It is less than the velocity of a, a light. Okay. Then we have the field is propagating through the helix and that is propagating through the axially generally and that's why we say that here if you take a ratio of the velocity propagating velocity of wave propagating through the helix and velocity of a light so we will get that what will be the pitch and what will be the pitch angle so as we have written earlier so rf will here, we, we, that is getting through this, particular, through this particular helix here, and the electron beam is getting through this, okay, so that beam, whatever the electrons are propagating, they form the bunches when they are interacting with the RF field, okay, when these electrons are interacted with the RF field, so they will form the bunches, and that bunches will give up the energy to the RF field, so that's why at each and every helix structure, so amplification will be taken. So how it is? Okay, so generally I say that here we have the a hare RF. We supposed to consider that we have say, a signal. The signal will be for a single helix. 
will get amplified it will be amplified further it will be amplified so likewise your amplifications are of a signal will be takes place so at every every helix there will be amplification takes because the field will form the bunches okay so we can say that we have the rf field here okay that rf field due to the rf field that electron propagating through this helix tube so they will form the bunches and then they will give up the energy to the field and then then once okay that they give up the energy then they move toward the collector and it will be collected later so generally if you consider the operation of this whatever the traveling go to amplifier so traveling go to amplifier here the electrons are passing through the this or we can say that a tube here okay electrons are passing through the tube here and then here the velocity modulation takes place across this a gap okay across this gap velocity modulation takes place it is depending upon that what will be your rf field there so electrons are accelerated or we can say that electrons are we can say decelerated so means acceleration or deceleration of the electron takes place so that here we can say that for a given particular rf field okay we can say that for a positive half cycle of a rf field suppose we can say that this one is about your rf field okay so now this one is about your rf signal so what happened here you are supposed to whatever the electrons are passing through the field so they have okay that electrons are passing through the field so this one is about we are, we can supposed to be a electric field we say and this one is about we can say a retarding force okay and this one is about your accelerating force or we can say that a accelerating field this one is called as a, a retarding field okay this one is called as a accelerating field okay now what why why it is called as a accelerating field and a retarding field here so generally we supposed to be write a signal whatever the rf signal when it is coupled to this helix here then the axial electric field we have the axial electric field here that exert a force on the okay this one rf here that will will exert a force on the electron so what is the force here generally force we say that f is equal to what minus e to e here so this one is a minus okay so we say minus here. or we can write e is equal to what minus del b e is equal to minus del that is our rate of change with respect to whatever the time okay so at that particular place we say it is about a opposite one okay means we can say that electrons entering electrons entering entering the retarding field electrons entering in the retarding field they are decelerated decelerated means what slower one and the electron are entering in the accelerating field though the electrons are accelerated okay and then due to the acceleration of the electron and a deceleration of the electron then bunches formation will be takes place so we can say that we supposed to be consider that a bunches formation will be takes place because of that acceleration and a deceleration of the electron and these bunches are supposed to be propagating toward the collector and the velocity of this particular electron it is slightly greater than the velocity that is velocity of this particular wave that is propagating to this helix here and in general we consider here there are the more electrons that are in the retarding field than in the accelerating field. okay there are the more electron than in the retarding more electron in the retarding field than in the electron field. and then and then there will be a great amount of energy will be transferred from the beam to the rf field here so that's why whatever the micro signal propagating 
through this helix structure okay whatever the, the micro signal propagating through the helix structure they will get amplified here so that's why there will be a large amplification takes place here okay if you can say that there will be large amplification takes place now then your signal get amplified here okay signal get amplified so then there is a attenuator here what is the role of attenuator generally if you consider that there will be a single tube and here it will be a collector okay at the end there will be collector but what happen when we supposed to be take output from the ceiling so there will be a device so if that device is mismatched okay whatever the output junction here if it is not match properly so then because of that not matching so there will be a slow wave structure standing wave structure standing wave will be generated so standing wave means what there will be signal reflected from this a load here so it will be reflected here and then it will reach to the collector again and then again that signal will be forwarded again and then that reflected signal again it will be forwarded through the helix and that will be get amplified so means what here whatever the noise noise generally we say that due to the mismatching okay or unwanted signal because of that mismatch that unwanted signal get amplified to avoid that unwanted signal to get amplified we need to use a attenuator so means initially we supposed to say that your signal get amplified then it is attenuator and then again it will be propagating through the helix and then we will get a output here now here because of that attenuator if suppose to be any mismatch occur here so that uh, mismatch will not reach to the device because signal get attenuated so that's why unwanted signal will not be amplified because of that yeah attenuator here. so that's why in the most of the cases in okay so that attenuator is used so that will reduces the whatever the waves traveling through that whatever the mismatch is or at the load here and because of that mismatch so what happen here that it will reduce the efficiency of the tube and it will reduce the output of this particular tube there so that's why that attenuators are used and again there are the magnets used here these are the magnets to be used that magnets are used to focus the electron to be propagating through the given particular a direction okay so that is about the role here so attenuator role is here to suppress the whatever the signal generated okay unwanted signal generated in a tube or it is used to prevent whatever the reflect that signal reflected from this okay due to any mismatch occur at this load so that's why that attenuator is used to attenuate whatever the unwanted signal or remove the unwanted signal so what happen if there is a, a mismatch the signal will be reflected back from the output terminal and then it will travel toward the gunner and then again it will be amplified so means your rf input as well as that unwanted signal so rf signal as well as the unwanted signal both are amplified here so at the end mismatch occur okay we say that rf input as well as that reflected signal will be okay that will be amplified and then then what happen if that both the signals are amplified then mismatch occur at the across the output here so that's why we need to consider that attenuator and that attenuator will absorb whatever the unwanted signal or that will be absorb whichever the signal growing in this particular helix tube so that it will not be amplified here unwanted signal will not be amplified here. so we need to use the attenuator at the center of the helix tube or we can use the attenuator at the in output end or we can use the output uh, attenuator at the input end here so generally we supposed to be consider that placing the attenuator near the input end then this particular end here so what will happen it will affect the punches of the electrons there okay so generally sorry uh, we can say that here we have the it will not affect the bunches of the electron if it is placed at the input right but what happen here the signal to be propagating through this mismatch it will reach to the 
in potassium okay so but so that's why that signal gate alternator at this point here so but what happen here so it will alternate at when it will be at the input end it will alternate both the input signal as well as the whatever the reflected signal so that's why we supposed to consider that alternator at the center of the helix here okay in between so in a traveling wave tube in stop it putting the alternator at the input end or output end that alternator is to be put here at the output end if it is output end so whatever the amplification signals are there that will be get alternated so this one is about we can say that interaction region here so your whatever the ra whatever the beam is there beam is interacted with the rf filter so electrons are propagating through the tube because of that rf field they will be accelerated or decelerated there and so amplification takes place only due to the retarding field so that's why the maximum attenuation will be takes place and will get that a large amplification due to this retarding field here and here if you consider that a slow wave structure is used and that slow wave structure generally it is to be used as a a helical type slow wave structure is used and electrons are propagating through this tube so we can analyze those velocity of those electron there as that velocity of those electron and this velocity of this particular wave it is a comparable here. so generally we can say that velocity of the electron propagating through this beam it is slightly greater than the velocity is propagating through this what wave propagating through this helical structure here. and electrons are we supposed to be consider that electrons entering the retarding field this one you can say that electron entering the retarding field because here we say that a velocity of the electron is adjusted slightly higher than the velocity of the wave propagating through this whatever the tube there and then and then then and then that axial electric field exert a force on the electron okay then and then axial electric field exerts a force on the electron and that force exerts it is depending upon that f is equal to minus e to e so we have this electric field and we have this retarding force field this one is about a accelerating force or we can say that retarding force or accelerating force here okay so we can say this one is about your electric field so electron entering in the retarding field electron entering in the retarding field this is about a your electric field interaction of the your beam here look okay. so electron beam is entering at the retarding field are decelerated are decelerated and those elect in the accelerating field are accelerated and then they begin to form a bunch at the center of the helix okay they will form the bunch because of that acceleration and deceleration at the center of the helix here okay so then that whatever the bunch formed the bunch are there that are propagating through this helix here okay that are propagating through the helix and that are propagating through this field and that in that case that field will be a zero here okay whatever the bunches are there that will be propagating through the axis here so means your bunches form at the center bunches form at the center of the helix here. and that bunches form at the center of the helix during the field will be a zero here okay at the center during the field will be a zero here so this one we can say that a traveling wave tube amplifier your uh, signal amplification is takes place and that amplification of the signal it is depending upon that what will be the velocity of a dc electron beam and what will be the rf field there and again amplification is depending upon that what will be the focusing magnet we are using and the role of the focusing magnet to focus the electron in the axial direction or or the axis of this helix and the helix okay we can say that helix diameter okay 
if we increase the diameter there, then it will change the pitch angle. So we're supposed to be consider that the diameter is very, very small and the beam propagating through the early, it is to be very, very small. And that is as compared to the diameter of the hill. So that's all about your traveling wave tube amplifier and that's traveling wave tube amplifier. And then once that electrons release their energy to the, give the energy to the RF field, your signal gate amplified and at the end, electrons will collected at the collector. So now I'll draw here the helix and I'll draw here the, whatever the amplification process. Okay. So we're supposed to be consider that we have the helix now. This one is about your helix now. Okay, I'm supposed to be consider. This one is about your RF field here. So now we're supposed to be consider that at this particular end, okay, your signal gate amplified it. So I'm supposed to be draw the amplification diagram at this particular end through the helix. So in that case, what happened? At the particular place here, the signals are propagating through this here. So this will be amplified. Okay, so likewise, your signal get amplified. This, whatever the thing. Okay, so likewise, your amplification of your signal through this, whatever the Q this particular tube here. okay signal form the punches at the particular place here so that your signal get amplified here. okay so we'll get the amplification so that's all about your traveling your tube amplifier and uh, we shall stop here and we have seen that a traveling your tube amplifier traveling your tube is used a helix structure for the amplification, amplification of the signal so 